Uh, second of our angle theorems. These are ones to do more with cyclic quadrilaterals. So we know the opposite angles of a cyclic quad are always supplementary. So there's our cyclic quad. So what we're saying basically there is alpha and beta will add to be 180. Um, let's prove it. So if I draw in a couple of radii, AO and OC, I can now use the uh, angle at the center theorem twice. So I can say, well, look, I know angle AOC would be twice alpha, but then if I look at it going the other way using the major arc, then AOC reflex, and that's how I tend to label the major one, because if you think about it, you're going to have one reflex angle and one either obtuse or acute, unless, of course, they're both semicircles. Uh, so two beta. Well, we know that those two angles must add together to give 360. It's a revolution. They're going around a point. So if 2 alpha plus 2 beta is 360, 1 alpha plus 1 beta must be 180. So that's proving our cyclic quad result. Then there's this little one, which people so often forget, and it can save a lot of time. Similar to, I guess, the exterior angle of a triangle. People forget to use that one as well. Uh, what it's basically saying is the exterior angle of any cyclic quad is equal to the opposite interior angle. So in our diagram, DCX would be the same as BAD. Uh, did I bother with a proof for that one? Or? No, because when you look at it, you just go, well, hang on, the opposite angles must add to 180. The straight line must add to 180. So therefore, they've got to be equal. And in fact, that's what a lot of people do. Instead of using this theorem, they go and do the oh, opposite angles are 180, and then they go and use angle sum of a straight line's 180 and still come up with the result. But it means you're taking a, a few steps rather than you can do it in one and use the exterior angle of a, a cyclic quad theorem. Okay. Uh, this one, angle is subtended at the circumference by the same or equal arcs. doesn't have to be the same arc necessarily. Are always going to be equal. Okay, so we more commonly see it when they're coming from the same arc, but if you know the arcs are of same length, then those angles have got to be the same. In fact, they don't even have to be in the same circle. They could be in different circles. If you know they're equal circles, the radii are the same, and the arcs are the same length, then those angles have got to be the same. So if you've got that situation, you could say angles subtended by equal arcs in equal circles, if you happen to have two circles. Uh, all right, let's go and prove. We want to prove ABD is ACD. It's a mouthful writing all that. So we tend to just write angles in the same segment. Because if you use the chord instead of the arc, we're breaking up the circle into two segments. And we're saying they're subtended in the same segment. They're not going in opposite ones. So we can say, well, angles in the same segment are equal. So A, B, D, A, C, D. And again, I'm going to use our angle at the centre idea. If I join up A, O and D, O, I can say, well, A, O, D is going to be twice A, B, D, angle at the centre twice, and so on. But I can also say A, O, D is twice A, C, D. Same reason. Well, therefore, A, B, D and A, C, D must be the same. So there's, there's the proof for that one. Watch out for when they're not in the same segment. Okay, people often make the mistake of using it, and uh, no, you can't. You've got to use the reflex angle if it's going the other way around. Okay, there's 9C.